Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about some coffee shots of CSSLP exam. In this video, I'm going to cover some practice questions which give you an idea about how to think like a manager in the CSSLP exam. If you're new to my channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can check my LinkedIn profile. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. Okay, so first coffee shot. Enterprise choose to design and develop its application with all activity configured on admin account. It means every activity need to be run by the admin account. This may be interpreted as a violation of which of the following design principle. Actually in CSSLP exam, if you're preparing for the certification, it is very important for you to have a good understanding of the secure design principle. So we have a different type of secure design principles that we need to perf that we need to adopt during a design phase of an application development. So here we have a four options like first is called as a least common mechanism. Least common mechanism basically mean the object should not be shared with others. This is basically used to prevent the buffer overflow, which is used to prevent the race conditions and all that. Example, if I say we have a memory here, so this memory is dedicatedly allocated for one application. So this application only will take this memory. This application, uh, this memory will not be allocated to other applications. So we have built the system in such a manner that this module or this application can only use by this memory. So this is called as a least common mechanism. Okay, which is basically mean that the access resource should not be shared. So sharing resources provide a channel along which information can be transmitted. So sharing should be minimized. So question talking about every activity configured with admin account, which is not at all related to this principle. Second is called as a psychological acceptability. Psychological acceptability is all about the user acceptability, user psychology, user transparency and all that. The best example is I'm building an application. Okay. In the application, I want to add the error. Now I have a two way to add the error. One is basically if the username we have and we have a password, if username person has type wrong, but password is basically type correct. So the error will be username is incorrect. So by this error, the user get a visibility. My username is incorrect, but some website, if you notice, even your username correct, but password is incorrect. They basically add the message username or password is incorrect. So here the user get confused. So here in this application where we showing an error called username or password is incorrect, which creating a confusion. So it is not something an acceptable error for the user by which he can do troubleshoot. But the problem is that application is very sensitive. We cannot add too much information. The best example is Gmail. In Gmail, until unless you don't add email address, it is not moved to the password page. So that is the best example of psychological acceptability because they, they Gmail know very well that they have designed the service from the normal user perspective. So in the, at, at a first stage only, the user will get to know that, okay, my email ID is invalid. But on the other side, the hackers can basically use this technique to gather the information. How? As a user, I added a random email ID in the login page. And if Gmail accept that, it means that ID is valid. So that is a data for me. So psychological acceptability is all about how you basically adopt the secure design principle. What kind of function you add by which you're trying to create a transparency to the user. Third principle is called as a least privilege. Principle of least privilege means necessary task required for the user to perform the activity. And the fourth is basically called as an open design. Open design means the code, source code, information is open to everyone. So everyone can do the experiment and can able to provide the better security things. Here the question talking about the violation. Okay, second keyword is everything is run with the admin account. So it's a breach of the principle of least privilege. Because according to least privilege mean the necessary user will get a necessary allocation according to that he will perform the task and here it is completely opposite of that so that is why it is a violation of the least privilege that's why the answer is c c for charlie let's move to the next coffee shot okay it's a very good question prab is an application security consultant currently the company is making a significant changes significant change to the application the application accept more and more inputs no control is there to verify. Okay. Prav want to ensure the application validated all the inputs and any invalid input should not lead to the disclosure of sensitive information. So first keyword is basically sensitive information, not disclosure of the sensitive information. So when, when building a such application with security design, do we need to consider 
वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस अबाउट लीस्ट कॉमन मैकेनिज्म ओके साइकोलॉजिकल एक्सेप्टेबिलिटी लीस्ट प्रिवलेज ओके बट दिस इज मोर अबाउट रिस्ट्रिक्टिंग द सेट ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन सो आई एम गोइंग विद द आंसर विच इज कॉल्ड फेल सिक्योर फेल सिक्योर बेसिकली इन्श्योर इफ एप्लीकेशन फेल इट विल बेसिकली सीज ऑल द इन्फॉर्मेशन एंड अदर एग्जाम्पल ऑफ फेल सिक्योर इज फायर वॉल फायर वॉल इज बेसिकली यूज टू फिल्टर द कनेक्शन इफ हैकर डिस्टर्ब द फायर वॉल इफ शट डाउन द फायर वॉल बिकॉज ऑफ दैट फायर वॉल बेसिकली डिसकनेक्ट ऑल द कनेक्शन सो ऑल द कनेक्शन विल बी बेसिकली ब्लॉक फ्रॉम वन साइड टू अदर साइड सो फायर वॉल इज बेसिकली फेल इन सच अ मैनर दैट इट मेंटेन द सिक्योरिटी एंड दैट इज अ रिक्वायरमेंट इन द एप्लीकेशन वी नीड विच वॉज मिसिंग That's why the answer is basically D, because least privilege is all about the necessary right has been assigned to the user, not more, not less. The question is not at all talking about that. Psychological acceptability is all about how the ease of transparency you giving in the application to the user, and the first part is called as a least common mechanism, basically where the resource will not be shared with the other resource, which is not at all talking about in the question. The question talking about disclosure of sensitive information. So in the case of application failed, it should not reveal any information. So it should be work in such a manner. That is why the answer is D for Delta. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Thank you. Okay. So with security principle, ensure that authority is not circumvented in subsequent request. of an object but subject by checking for authorization okay rights and privilege upon every request for the object the question talking about we have to make sure whenever any subject okay request for an object it need to go through a proper authorization process without authorization they cannot access that so least common mechanism is removed psychological acceptability is opposite of the question okay least privilege is also make sense but the most effective answer is basically complete mediation one example i can give you suppose when you browse a banking website if your session is idle if your session is idle for next 10 minutes so you have to re log in you need to type password again you notice that why because in that application they are following the complete mediation principle which basically ensure for every access attempt every access request any changes in the state it need to go through a authorization process okay so that is a question talking about checking for authorization upon every request okay so whenever in the exam question talking about for every access attempt need to go through authorization answer is complete mediation another example of complete mediation is the network topology whenever any global user want to access the enterprise it need to be authenticate through a bastion host until unless it doesn't authenticate to bastion host they cannot able to access the enterprise network that is another example of complete mediation third example recently we have seen in the nac solution network access control any user is there who wish to part of a enterprise until unless nac doesn't give the authorization after verifying the baseline you will not get the ip address so nac will first verify validate check whether it, the system is compliance with the baseline then they basically authorize the system for the access without the authorization they cannot access the things so this is basically where we follow the complete mediation so that is where the answer is basically c for charlie Let's move to the next coffee shot. Okay, very good question. Prab is a application security consultant. Currently, the company is doing a significant changes to the application. Okay, they are focusing on the single sign-on first keyword, single sign-on process in the enterprise. See why Gmail introduced single sign-on. You log in once, and based on that, you can able to access n number of resources. They want to keep the simple function. In India, we have a Covin platform by which you doing a Covin registration. That is another example of single sign-on. You just need to enter the OTP, and based on that, we directly access the interface. So here they talking about the question is they focusing on the single sign-on process in the enterprise. They want a simpler authentication along with they also want to focus on low coupling. Low coupling. Now what is low coupling? So we have a two type of coupling: tight coupling, and we have a low coupling or loose coupling. so tight coupling is basically when we have a module okay this module will not going to communicate with any other module will not able to integrate with any other module which is part of a different proprietary standard but loose coupling is basically mean this module can be easily integrate with any other module and the example is tight coupling is like a partner so we have a boyfriend and we have a girlfriend okay so boyfriend will basically put too much restriction on the girlfriend so whenever girl try to talk to someone boyfriend creating a concern boyfriend will make sure girlfriend should not able to talk to anyone so this is the example of a tight coupling and what happen after that lead to fight error mistakes and everything 
but in the loose coupling what happen is we have a boyfriend and we have a girlfriend girlfriend can speak to anyone boyfriend can speak to anyone they don't have any issues they giving a freedom so that is called loose coupling loose coupling basically mean module can be communicate with any other module can be integrated with any module but a tight coupling cannot be work okay so they talking about low coupling mean it is easily manageable and when building such application with security design do we need to consider most so we have a four options economy of mechanism psychological acceptability definitely be removed because it is not at all question talking about that least privilege is basically mean necessary right has been assigned to the user but here the question is with a single sign on access anything so it is completely opposite of that complete mediation makes sense because for every access setup need to go through authorization but in the single sign on you are authenticating once only so this is the example of the economy of mechanism which is also called as a keep it simple economy of mechanism has a very simple principle is keep the code simple and clean when your environment is basically simple when your network is basically simple it is easy to manage instead of having a complex network which is difficult to manage that is why we went with the answer a next go through the next question thank you okay quick question who ultimately play an important role when determining the software security requirement in the initiation stage of sdlc who ultimately play an important role when determining software security requirement in initiation stage of sdlc directly we removing data custodian because they are the one who manage security custodian again they are the one who manage so we left with b and a keyword talking about determining okay security manager will review but by end of the day ultimately business owner is the one who approved okay because keyword is ultimately so that is why the answer is basically a for alpha ha huh, if the question talking about who will consider then answer is security manager or cso but by end of the day who will approve the security requirement need to be organized it come from a business manager slash business owner okay let's move to the next coffee shot thank you okay so next is you are working as a application security consultant for an aspirants fine and uh, the aspirant directly selling a cots applications one day you receive a multiple emails regarding the reuse of your cots application this action impact negatively on the enterprise business definitely if someone is using and reselling my cots it's a concern so what educate approach would you like to suggest to maintain the anti piracy protection so option a license verification check must be dynamic and preferably with the phone home mechanism not be dependent on the factor that end user can change makes sense second is code must be obfuscated if feasible to deter the duplications but problem is that in the courts we don't have a visibility of the code so be removed software must be digitally signed to protect against the tampering but what about the reuse because with the help of private key, public key we are verifying the authenticity so it is only from authenticity point of view stronger sln contract but again it is a directive control so the most effective control is basically a license verification online process or over the phone because that is how you can able to prevent the piracy of an application i'm sure you have seen lot of companies nowadays are using a online registration process so that is a process we are using here so answer is basically a for alpha let's move to the next question okay so your team is working on an enterprise application and all the activity has been divided into multiple team you need to ensure that design satisfy the specific security requirement the first keyword is security requirement you also need to ensure the implementation does not deviate from the secure design you need to ensure no scrape no scope creep occur scope keep basically mean not adding more than which is defined or going out of the scope so what is the most effective process we can use to track all this activity see security by design process just following the process will not able to achieve the tracking of this activity agile is just a methodology okay and strong sla is more about what is agreed on that but we need to verify with the help of what is delivered actually so sla is more from a governance point of view just using a agile will not able to track until unless we have a document in place security by design process is just a process that you have created 
So the most important answer is RTM, Requirement Traceability Matrix. This is something we create in a functional requirement phase and follow till the deployment. This is a document which basically document the all the requirements, what is the security requirements during a development when we're creating a test case. When we do the testing, we update the same result in this document. During a deployment, we verify whether everything has been uh, developed and deployed as per requirement. So this is a document we follow throughout the journey of SDLC. And by this way, we can able to track our requirement. That's why the close answer is basically B for beta. Okay, let's move to the next coffee shot. Thank you. Okay, so which of the following characteristics of the software assurance does a piece of software demonstrate when it is able to survive attacks from a threat agent and continue to operate accordance with the established security policy. It means the question talking about what is the characteristics of a software assurance we have by which we can able to continue software in the case of failure. So option is reliability. So when I say reliability, reliability is the ability of a service to provide its expected function. But here the question specifically talking about continue to operate. The keyword is continue to operate. It is not about providing a reliable result. It is all about the continue to operate. Second is basically called as a uh, resiliency. Resiliency is basically about uh, ability to avoid or mitigate the impact from the adverse event and continue service in the case of downtime, which makes sense. Third is basically called as a recoverability. Recoverability means able to restore. It means failure is occur and then we restore. But that is a requirement for resiliency. Recoverability is a component for resiliency because until we don't have a recoverability, we cannot able to offer the resiliency. And redundancy is basically mean group of component. If one component is fail, we have another component to continue the services. But again, D is a part of the B. So ultimately answer is basically B for beta because resiliency is basically ensure the continue the service, continue the application in the case of failure. How? With the help of recoverability, with the help of redundancy. So that's why I'm going with the answer B for beta. This is all from my side team. Do let me know in a comment box. How do you find this video? And I'm also making another video uh, on the CSSLP around four to five videos. We have more on question based of CSSLP. And if you still not subscribe to my channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. Thank you. Goodbye.